Good day, I'm Ma'am Apo, your teacher in entrepreneurship. For today's discussion, I am just uh, continue uh, my discussion about the four M's of operations. We already discussed the manpower, the method, and the machines or machineries. Now we will continue the discussion to the fourth uh four ends of operation which is the materials okay so materials simply refers to the raw materials needed in manufacturing of goods basically materials are assembled to make a finished products okay so for example wood is a raw material used to produce a cabinet or other furniture what else uh cloth for uh for clothing like blouse like pants okay or uh cloth to produce bags what else um uh, uh, uh leaves to produce papers okay so those are examples of raw materials if the materials are of poor quality the product will sure, surely be of poor quality, quality as well. So, wala, kayo, wala tayong aasahan. Pag poor, poor quality ang ginamit natin, of course, we can produce poor uh, products. But if we uh, use the best quality of the raw materials, of course, we will produce uh, best quality of uh, products. Next, factors to consider in selecting raw materials. Number one, costs. Uh, may mga quality materials naman na mas mababa ang halaga. Okay? So, pwede natin gamitin yun. Number two, quality. Okay? So, kasi kapag sinabi natin quality, uh, ito yung mga tumatagal. Pag hindi quality, ito yung mga madaling masira. Availability. So, available pa siya within, uh, within your community or within the town, within the province, and, and within, the, uh, uh, dito, within the nation or within the country. So, dapat alam din natin yan. Suppliers, credibility. So, ito yung mahirap uh, humanap yung suppliers na... Uh, supplier na hindi nananaga ng presyo at supplier na honest at magbibigay talaga ng quality products. Number five, waste that may be produced by the materials. So, if you are going to produce a, a product, so titignan din natin kung yung waste ba ay makakasira sa ating kalikasan at yung waste ba alam natin kung paano siya uh, kung paano siya i itatapon or i antaw dito itatapon ng maayos okay so dapat alam natin yun next value chain versus supply chain so what is the difference between the two so when we say value chain it refers to the process where the business acquires raw materials so, it's the process of the business acquires or buys or bought the raw materials. Add value to them through manufacturing and other procedures to produce a finished product and then sell it to consumers. So, when we are uh, buying raw materials, we are at a little, uh, after we buy our raw materials, so, pinaprocess natin siya o itinatawag natin method. So, with the method, doon tayo nag add ng value or nung kahalagahan ng products. Okay? So, bakit tayo nag add ng value? Kasi ito yung tinitignan na benefits or ito yung sinasabing uh, nakakasatisfy sa, ating, sa needs ng ating mga customers. So, what about supply chain? On the other hand, signifies the phases and stages the product or service goes, goes through to reach the customers. Ito yun naman yung supply chain. How your product reach your consumers. Paano natin i-deliver? What is the mode of 
uh, of the delivery no what ano yung gagamitin nating uh, system kung paano makakarating yung ating product sa ating consumers or customers so while value chain is a set of interconnected actions a company performs to have a competitive advantage Supply chain involves all the parties in fulfilling customer demand and eventually leading their satisfaction leading to their satisfaction. So value chain is now interconnected actions magkaka ugnay no na actions a company performs to have competitive advantage kasi nga in that process in the value chain yan tayo nag uh, produce or gumagawa ng ating products. So after that, the supply chain it involves all the parties. So the any parties na yon yung mga mode of deliveries in fulfilling customer demand and eventually leading to their satisfaction. Okay, so there there are five steps in value chain. Number one, in inbound logistics. So this involves receiving of materials, storing them, and controlling or of inventory next operations so this involves activities wherein the entrepreneur adds value to product through manufacturing and assembly of merchandise that transfer raw materials into finished products so ito na yung operation no kung paano nabubuo ang ating product kung paano tayo nag add ng value o ng kahalagahan ng product Outbound logistics, this involves activities required in reaching an end users. So, examples are warehousing, recording of inventories, order fulfillment, then delivery. So, number four, marketing and sales. This involves activities associated with convincing customers to procure the offered product. So, paano natin sa marketing kasi dito na ang nangyayari kung paano natin pinapakilala yung ating products and of course sa sales uh, kung paano uh, sa atin kung paano natin sila uh, ibebenta sa ating mga customers next supply chain the supply chain in includes the flow of all information, products, materials, and funds between different stages of creating and selling a product to the end. The concept of the supply chain comes from an operational management perspective. So every step in the process, including creating a good, a good or service, manufacturing it, transporting it to a place of sale, and selling it is, is part of a company's supply chain so from uh dito. so every every step in the process simula sa paggawa ng goods and services sa pagmamanufacture nito sa pagbuo nito sa pag uh, transport nito or sa pagdeliver nito then sa pagbebenta yun po ay part ng company supply chain so the supply chain comprises all tasks that are involved in knowing and satisfying a customer request. So dapat sa supply chain ma ma fulfill nila kung ano yung dapat malaman ng mga customer sa product or service or service na meron ang kompanya nyo and to satisfy them. Okay, next. What are the supply chain functions? Number one, product development. Mark, product development. So, how the product is being developed? What are the stages or what are the the process uh, that involves in this product development? Number two is marketing. How your product will be recognized by your uh, customers? Operations. Are your operations do you have are your operations are good do you have enough employees or machines okay distribution do you have uh, your own 
logistics or delivery okay finance are uh, are your uh, finance or your money is enough to produce goods or and services or to distribute or deliver the products then customer service after your customers bought the product so is there any uh, assistance like customer service that you are going to provide them whenever there is a uh, dito, a problem that they may encounter to their to your products or services so those are the functions of the supply chain next developing business model so a company's plan for making profit is referred to as business model model basically it identifies and explains the goods and or services to sell target market and projected expenses so anong nilalaman ng business model kung ano, kung ano yung mga goods or service na ibebenta mo sino sino yung mga target market and and how much is your projected expenses Business models are essential for new and established business enterprise. So they help new business to attract investment, hire talents, and encourage management and staff. staff. Established businesses should regularly update their plans to cope up with trends and challenges in the future. So dapat uh, sa business model natin, uh, we should update our plans to cope up with trends and challenges in the future. So, dapat ito ay elastic. Ito ay, uh, ang tawag dun sa ano yan? Uh, dapat ito ay, what is that term? Dapat ito ay flexible, okay? It's flexible para, kasi alam naman natin yung mga trends ngayon, ang bibilis mag- uh, mag-upgrade mag na tinatawag, no? So, dapat alam natin yung trends and uh, yung uso. Okay? Next, there are three sections of business model. Number one is resources. So, everything it takes to make something like design, raw materials, manufacturing, labor, and so on. Number two is dissemination. So, everything it Everything it takes to sell that thing, like marketing, distribution, delivering a service, and processing the sales. Then number three, the rate. How and what the customers pays, like pricing strategy, payment methods, payment timing, and so on. So those are the three sections of business models. So what are the your resources? The dissemination or how to take or how you will sell that thing, then na, num, uh, number three is rate. So, what the customer pays, dapat alam po nila yon yung pricing strategy mo, the payment methods, then the payment timing. So, a successful business model simply needs to earn more than the cost to make the product or service profit. You do not have to create a new model to be an effective business person you could just adapt an existing model and execute it accordingly to different target market. So, ibig sabihin, uh, hindi, hindi kailangan na, na gumawa ka pa ng panibagong model mo. Kung, kung nakita mo yung business model ng ibang company, ng ibang entrepreneur ay successful, you can adapt that, you can uh, make some modification then execute the business model. So, pwede po yun. So, what are the basic type of business model? Number one, manufacturer. A manufacturer acquires unrefined material and produces a new merchandise. He or she can also manufacture pre-made parts into a new product. So, pre-made parts, ibig sabihin, ano na siya, uh, parang isang product na siya, then dadagdagan na lang para magkaroon ulit ng isa pang products. A new manufacturer may sell his or her products directly to end consumers or it can be sold to another business person or what we call the uh, merchandiser, no? Who acts as the intermediary, yung taga-pamagitan, okay? 
So, pwede yung manufacturer direct na siyang magtinda sa mga consumer or pwede namang ibibenta niya ng maramihan sa mga tinatawag na intermediary or yung mga merchandiser. Number two, distributor. A distributor buys manufactured goods directly from a manufacturer and resell to retailers or to the end consumers. Also, distributor dis distributes uh, the manufactured goods directly to uh, from a manufacturer to resell and resell to retailers. So, distributor ang tawag nila. Ito yung mga may mga, mga warehouse or may mga shop na pwede silang uh, mag-stock ng kanilang mga goods. Then, sila yung magbibenta sa mga end consumers. Next, retailer. Ito yung retailer sa Tagalog Tinian. So, a retailer acquires product from a distributor or wholesaler and then sells those products to the end consumers. Sila yung nagbibenta uh, from, at uh, sila yung nagbibenta sa mga end consumers kasi nga sila yung tingi at pwede pa isa-isa, dalawa may next, franchise when you say franchise it is franchising is the method of utilizing another company's business model that has already been successfully created instead of establishing a new product so franchise it means that uh, you are buying the, the name of the business then Yung process, yung, yung products, yung mga ingredients, yung mga raw materials, sa kanila mo din bibilhin. Okay, so ang maganda dito, there is already na, there is already made na business model, may sistema na rin. Ang gagawin mo na lang is to uh, apply it. Okay, so next, the franchiser pays the ongoing royalties to be able to use the company name, model, method, and other necessary materials. Next, forecasting revenue and cost to be incurred. Forecasting business revenue and expenses during the startup stage is more of an art than science. So most entrepreneurs complain because forecasting takes a lot of their time, which they think would be of better use if it's if is spent in selling than planning. So, some entrepreneurs are not used to uh, make forecasting about the revenue and cost. So, sa kanila kasi parang waste of time yun, but it is not. It is very important. But more investors would be interested in financing your business venture if you could provide them of thoughtfully done forecast because they know that this forecast will surely be of help in, in making your business a success by creating highly effective operational plans. So, as an entrepreneur, one of your goals is to have uh, an, uh, or to encourage investors to invest in your business, no? sa malaking tulong yun. So, if you want to have investors to invest in your business, you must have this forecasting revenue. Kasi ang mga investors dito sila nakabase kung magiging successful nga ba yung business mo or hindi. So, simplified financial forecasting. So, simplified kasi uh, yun na natin, simplihan na lang natin, no? So, start with expenses, not revenues. Expenses muna, hindi muna yung kikitain, okay? Kasi lahat muna ng, sa business, pag nagsisimula, lahat yan expenses muna. And remember the following when forecasting. Since advertising mar and marketing costs always go up, make sure to double your estimates. So, i-double mo yan. Kung halimbawa, ngayon ay 1,000, sa, sa forecasting mo, gawin mong 2,000. Expenses for legal matters such as licensing fees, permits, and insurances must be tripled in your forecast because they are unpredictable and most of them exceed expectation. Ito kasi hindi natin hawak to yung mga licensing, licensing fees, permits, and insurances. So ito bigla na lang nagtataas, okay, without any notice, without any uh, in, information. So, dapat tinitriple natin yung ating forecast. Number three, consider your service as labor expense. So, ito yun. So, ito yung nagiging problema kapag halimbawa ikaw yung owner, 
wala ka nang sineset as kung magkano yung sahod mo every day. Kasi nga ikaw na owner, dapat pala hindi. So, you should consider also your labor as your expense. Number two, forecast revenues using both conservative reality and aggressive dream. Conserve reality, ibig sabihin, uh, wag masyadong uh, realistic. Okay? Then, dapat aggressive dream, ibig sabihin, masyadong uh, mataas yung yung pangarap. No? Conservative real, reality makes you logical while aggressive dream makes you motivated and inspire as well. Yun na. It is recommended that you incorporate your dreams and at least a set of predictions with aggressive ex- expectation. Number three, check the key ratios to make sure your projections are sound. Ano yung key ratios nyo? Kung maganda ba? No? When aggressive revenue forecast is made, it is easy to overlook expenditures. So, positive thinking might be of big help. So, pagiging positive thinking, nakakatulong daw yun. But, it will not be enough to pay your bills. So, you must reasonably uh, balance your forecast. To do this, you should have reality checks for the key ratios. So, according to Advani, ratios that could be your guide in thinking are as follows. Letter A, gross margin. Yan, gamitin niyang gross margin. Yan, this refers to how much of the total revenue is the total direct cost during a period. Minsan kasi uh, masyadong mataas si, si direct cost kaysa sa total revenue. So, ano nangyayari? Uh, lugi, si negosyo. It's either quarterly, annual, or biannual. When you say quarterly, every three months. Pag sinabing annually, yearly. Kapag biannual, every six months. Operating profit margin is refers to how much of the total revenue is the total operating cost, direct cost, overhead, excluding financial cost during a period. When we say operating profit margin, this involves all the costs in the operation. Ano, ano yung mga operation na yun? The direct cost, the overhead, uh, and the excluding financial cost. Ito yung operating operating uh, profit margin, ito yung operational operating cost wherein those are the expenses that we have in during the operations or yung paggagawa natin ng ating products. The letter C, total headcount per client. You must divide the number of your employees by the number of expected clients. You should consider revisiting your forecast about revenue and payroll expense as your business grows. Kasi baka mamaya mas marami si... mas marami ang employees kaysa sa clients. Okay, so medyo malulugi kayo doon. So, dapat alam nyo yung everyday na pumapasok sa inyong shop para sa gayon mabibilang ninyo kung ilan yung employees na kailangan ninyo. So, computing for, for profit, the simplest formula in computing the profit is by subtracting total expenses from the total revenue. Okay, so, isa-subtract lang yung total expenses from the total Revenue. So, the computation of profit is by deducting direct cost and indirect cost, also known as overheads, okay, from sales. Direct costs are expenses that directly go into producing goods or providing services such as labor. Ito yung mga direct costs natin, labor, materials, and other manufacturing supplies. While indirect costs are the general business expenses that keep the business operational such as rent, utilities, and general office expenses. So, those are the indirect costs. Okay, so that is the end of the module 1 under quarter 2 about the four ends of operation. I hope uh, you learned something about our topic for today. Uh, Have a great day, keep safe, and God bless.